I believe that education is something that no one can ever take away from you. And we learn every single day and to keep growing in that knowledge, I believe, is something that God has asked us to do. Um, he gave us the power to have that knowledge and wisdom and discernment to learn different things and share that with other people. So no matter what the obstacle is, there's always a way, especially when you believe in a God that provides. He, he is able and He does everything in His perfect time. So families or students who are thinking about coming to HBU, do it and pray that God will provide because He is so faithful and He is always there and never leaves us and never forsakes us. Elizabeth Saldivar serves as chair of the Student Foundation, a group whose members serve as fitting representatives of Houston Baptist University, interacting with friends and guests of HBU at various events. She's a student worker in the President's Office and at the desk of the Academic Success Center and serves as a tutor. Elizabeth also serves as a mentor for summer launch and impact programs and is a historian for the Filipino Student Association. As a management major, she is the first person in her family to go to college. Congratulations on that. Thank you. So tell us how you became the first person in your family to go to college. Well, my parents were always there behind me, encouraging me to do the best that I could in school. I had two older brothers who were also very bright. Uh, they just didn't go to college themselves. And I took it upon myself to be the first one in my family to attend a four-year institution. And now I have my younger brother who just recently got accepted to HBU and he's gonna be here with me next year. Oh, that is so cool. Yes. What's his name? Christian Saldivar. Oh, Christian. Yes. I've got a son-in-law named Christian and a grandson named Christian. Um, Elizabeth, you went to what high school? South Houston High School in Pasadena ISD. Okay, good. And not only are you a first generation student, but did you ever think that you would end up as chair of student foundation representing the university, working in the president's office? I would have never imagined. It was just, I, from everything that God had for me here at HBU, it was just door after door. I went from two weeks before starting my freshman year here at HBU, texting my success coach and I told him, I love HBU, I know it's where I belong, but I don't think there's any way I could possibly afford being here. And I started here my first year by faith and sure enough, God provided. Sophomore year came around and I found myself again wondering how I was going to pay for school. And I kept applying for scholarships and trying different things, but everything kept falling through. And I applied for a scholarship that's geared towards first generation college students. And I left in God's hands and two weeks later, sure enough, I got an email, a call saying that I had been chosen to be the recipient for that scholarship. Here I am junior year here at HBU, and I'm proud to say that I have a full ride to the university that just has my heart. Uh, <laughs> oh, that makes me want to just, uh, makes me want to cry. I mean, I, I, I love to see young people pursue their vision. And, you know, you have adversity along the way, mm -hmm. but adversity really, although people don't recognize it, is one of the best things that happens to us because it makes us tougher. It helps us rely on God and not ourselves, And then it fulfills the faithfulness of God to us, you know, because the Lord will always come through and he certainly has for you. Mm -hmm. Now, your mom and dad did not go to college. No, sir. They had a desire for you to go to college. Yes. And, uh, and why do you suppose they had that strong desire? So my parents came from Mexico at a very young age. Okay. And my dad, his whole life, he's been a mariachi. Um, he's in a mariachi group with his brothers. And isn't that uh, 
the people that play the music, yes. right? <laughs> yes. I, I, I love mariachi those guys. Band. <laughs> um, and when he was like in 2001, he suffered an accident where he fell off of a ladder and landed on uh, the bricks that we had in our garden. And he suffered fractures in his two discs in his spine which left him uh, partially immobilized. So he can't turn his neck all the way around and his back is also hunched over from the accident. So there was really no other way uh, that he could get a job uh, with, to provide our family with a stable income. Mm -hmm. So we've always been dependent on him uh, and his music. And my mom was also very sick um, for a long time in and out of the hospital. Um, when she was pregnant with me specifically, uh, the doctor told her that she needed to have an abortion because I was mm. going to be born uh, disabled or just I was not going to be fully uh, capable. Um, but she said, no, you're not taking my baby. And he told her, Esther, I know you're a woman of faith, but like, you're taking a big risk. And she trusted in the Lord. and. Here I am, <laughs> 20 years later, and in the in graduated top 10 of my class in high school, and now I'm here uh, at a university. And just seeing how my parents took it upon themselves to support me no matter what, it was difficult at times because I am a first-generation college student. And I would stay on campus late studying, and they'd be like, where are you? Or, when are you coming home? It shouldn't be this difficult. And they, they didn't understand at times, but sure. they were always there to support me. Sure. And um, so how did your attention get turned to HBU when you left high school? I had a friend in high school who, whom I told that my parents didn't want me to leave Houston because I'm mm. their only daughter. I have yeah. three brothers, but I'm the only girl, so they didn't want me to leave the Houston area. And by how, how hard I had worked in high school to be in the top 10 of my class, I knew I didn't want to go to a community college. I wanted to go straight into a university. And I mentioned that to a friend, and he said, have you heard about HBU? And I honestly said, no, what is that? And I looked it up and started reading. I saw that it was a Christian Baptist University with that Christian worldview and I was like oh my goodness this is me I looked into it I submitted my easy app waited and I got accepted so that's how I heard about HBU that is super what a great story uh, you're an inspiration to so many other students that you you, you can persevere yes. and you can achieve your goals um, we, the beauty about America uh, is if you can dream it, you can do it. And it's a great, great, illust greatly illustrated in you. Now, let's talk for a minute about Student Foundation, a group whose members serve as fitting representatives of the university. Mm -hmm. Give us an idea of what Student Foundation is. So the Student Foundation consists of about 12 students who are first selected by faculty and staff here at HBU. They are later granted an interview uh, with some of the, the administrators here at HBU. And after that interview process, if they are approved, they are later presented to the president and the president himself goes and makes the selections and approves us. We're the only presidential student organization here on campus. Wow. And it's a great honor to be able to meet with friends, donors, alumni, and work at different events. We work closely with uh, the alumni uh, office as well as the events office and even the guild and just different uh, people that are friends of the university. When you're at working in the president's office at the desk of Academic Success Center, you serve as a tutor. Yes. So what does that entail? So when I work at the president's office, I have a lot of administrative tasks to complete, and it's a variety of things, really. There's nothing as a, a normal day. Yes. It's just I do my best to maintain order here in the office and make sure that accounts are taken care of, filing, things like that. 
when I work the desk at the Academic Success Center, I help students that come in to make tutoring appointments or point them in the direction of where they need to um, for academic advising and things like that. As a tutor, I tutor English, philosophy, uh, business math, which is business calculus, and um, I just do my best to help students and make sure that they don't feel ashamed of needing help because when I was in high school, I was like, okay, this is super easy. I never had to go to tutoring in high school, mm -hmm. but coming to a university, mm -hmm. it's completely different. You go from not having to study for certain exams and things like that to having to study extremely hard, and every student learns in different ways. Some people are visual learners, auditory learners, kinesthetic, and you just have to be able to adapt to each student's needs and help them in the way that best suits them. You know, Elizabeth, there are parents listening and grandparents listening and probably prospective students listening who probably think nobody in my family has ever gone to college and I don't know that I could make it. And they have a hundred reasons why they couldn't come to HBU and see themselves successful. Can you look in that camera right behind me and talk to them for a few minutes and yes. just tell them what you feel from your heart they need to hear about how, to, how, to, how they can make it like you did? So every person has things that they go through. For me, my biggest obstacle was probably the financial aspect of not being able to afford coming to a private institution, such a wonderful university, but HBU provides such great scholarships and there's also outside scholarships that are very helpful to students who apply. And also first generation students, we have it even more difficult at times because our parents or family don't really understand where we're coming from. And for me personally, coming from a Hispanic background, they have that mentality, we need to work. And education really takes the back seat. They just want us to get out of high school and start working right away and make a living to provide for our families. But I believe that education is something that no one can ever take away from you. And we learn every single day. And to keep growing in that knowledge, I believe, is something that God has asked us to do. Um, he gave us the power to have that knowledge and wisdom and discernment to learn different things and share that with other people. So no matter what the obstacle is, there's always a way, especially when you believe in a God that provides. And he is able and he does everything in his perfect time. So families or students who are thinking about coming to HBU, do it and pray that God will provide because he is so faithful and he is always there and never leaves us and never forsakes us. Boy, that was really well said. Thank you so much for that. Um, you know, overcoming hurdles, and that, that was interesting. I never thought about that till you said it. Um, I suppose there are some cultures or families where, you know, you just go work. Mm -hmm. And the ideal of getting an education is like, are you, are you not working? You know, we got to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. is, is, is that a part of the culture you were raised in? Yes. Can you explain that in some degree? Well, especially having parents who came from a different country. Uh -huh. They didn't know the language. They didn't know anyone here. So in their mind, all they knew to do was work. Sure. Make a living, provide for their families. And my father only made it up to the third grade in Mexico. My mom made it up to the ninth grade in Mexico. So them coming here, it was important for us to, yes, go through our public education. But since college was never an option for them, they didn't really think about it. Um, and coming from that Hispanic background, I don't know about other cultures, I can't speak for them, but it's definitely that working mentality 
And like I said, education really does take a back seat to making a living, getting the bills paid, as you said. Now, uh, the reality is that this education you're getting is going to catapult you to make quite a living, <laughs> isn't it? So your major is what? Business management. Business management. Yes. Cool. And uh, have you given some thought about what, air, what career that you're going to pick with that degree in the, in the days ahead? Yes, sir. So this summer I traveled to Israel with an organization called Passages Israel. Oh, sure. Who partners here with the university. And being in Israel, I saw that that was something I needed to do, something with regard to the nation of Israel. I came back and that desire in my heart just kept growing. I received an email about a possible scholarship opportunity to travel to Washington, D.C. for a KUFI summit, which is Christians United for Israel. Oh, sure. Okay. And it is founded by Pastor John Hagee. Ah, uh, sure. I've been there. And I applied and I submitted my application and I saw it says, we've been accepting applications since March 2018. And I said, oh, well, it's almost July. Like, how great of a chance do I have to go? But again, I left it in God's hands. And sure enough, I got a call the next day saying that I had been accepted for a full scholarship. They were gonna pay my flight, hotel, the, the cost of the event, everything. And in my time in DC, I heard from lots of speakers. And just to interrupt you, KUFI is Christians United for Israel, just for our friends that are listening. Yes. And uh, it is an organization where evangelicals, non-evangelicals, pro-Israel friends come together and support the nation of Israel on the premise of Genesis 12. I'll bless those who bless you. I'll curse those who curse you. And in you, Israel, will all the nations of the earth be blessed. So just to insert that, keep going. Yes, definitely. <laughs> we heard from current IDF soldiers. Uh -huh. yeah, which would be Israeli Defense Force. Go ahead. Um, from uh, UN Rep Ambassador Nikki Haley. Yes, she was there. I love her. Obviously, uh, Pastor John Hagee. Yep. And just Ted Cruz, senators, congressmen, congresswomen from all over the nation. And... I had the chance to lobby three bills on Capitol Hill. Cool. And I had never lobbied before in my life. Uh -huh. It was something I had learned about in my government classes uh -huh. in high school and here at the university, but I had never even imagined that someday I would be lobbying on Capitol Hill. And I had the honor of doing so for the nation of Israel. And now coming back here, coming home, being able to reflect on my time in Israel this summer, as well as my time in DC, I believe God has really placed in my heart that no matter what I do with my career, it has to be, has to be with the nation of Israel. Wow. And whether that be through business or even politics, wherever my degree is, help, is able to help me get to. Well, I wanna tell you, and having been to Israel many times, uh, there are many opportunities, both here in the United States and in Israel. You know, most Americans have never been to Israel, and I feel sad they haven't because it is the IT capital of the world. Right there in the middle of this oasis in the Middle East is this nation that is exploding in technology and prosperity. And obviously, we know why, because of God's, uh, God's touch on that country. Um, so you're going to graduate in what year? 2020. 2020. Great. And, um, we just want to tell you what an inspiration you are to us. You know, when I, along with President Sloan and others, when we, when we come together and we work on different things and we endeavor to put our shoulders together and move HBU forward, it's people just like you who give the inspiration to keep right on going. And so let me just commend you, Elizabeth, for uh, following God, letting his light shine, 
God's got a dynamic future for you. And I want to remind every parent, grandparent, some of you who maybe have never thought you could get a degree, look no further than Elizabeth Saldivar and the miracle that God did in her life. Just think of all the people she's going to touch in the days and years ahead. And Houston Baptist University has been privileged to play a part. And all the people who give gifts and support make it happen. And we thank you from the very bottom of our heart. So keep on keeping on. Thank you for stopping yes, by. Of course. And uh, just before we go, the color of your coat is? Orange. <laughs> and what does that represent? So we know that HBU's colors are orange and blue, hell the orange and blue. <laughs> um, and this is a blazer that represents as part of the HBU Student Foundation. It was something that was started years ago when the, the organization commenced and it kind of went away for a while. But last year we had the privilege of bringing the blazers back and here we are. And if anyone sees us walking around campus or at events, either off campus or here on, uh, on campus uh, serving, if you see someone in orange blazers, that's us, the Student Foundation. And we're proud to be a light here at HBU and beyond and to be ambassadors for what the, uni the university stands for. Well, indeed you are. <laughs> Carry on. We're behind you, okay? Thank God you. God bless you. Thank you so much.